Get a styrofoam cooler. I found mine at Walmart. Take a piece of cardboard, trace with a sharpie, and cut with an X-Acto blade to make it slightly smaller than the lid of the cooler. Take a piece of upholstery foam and trace with a sharpie and cut with an X-Acto blade. Hot glue the upholstery foam to the top of the lid with the cardboard on top of that. Take a blanket, rug, or textile of your choice and cut it to size to the top of the lid. Fold and hot glue to the lid and trim the excess. Use an old sheet, cut to size, and wrap around the cooler base. Hot glue all the way around the base of the cooler and trim off the excess. Cut the remainder of the blanket, fold over, and hot glue the edges to clean them up. Wrap the blanket pieces around the base with hot glue. Add tassels from the blanket around the top of the base of the cooler to give it a boho look. There you have it, a cheap way to create your own boho DIY storage ottoman for your home for less than $15. Grab a large planter and place a wood round inside. Fill the space with wine corks and place vinyl surface bumpers all the way around. Place some glass on top and you just made an outdoor table. Perfect for any porch, patio, or outdoor space. The first part is making sure that the bottom is flat and level. When you're stacking the cinder blocks on top of each other, always make sure you use an all-purpose construction adhesive. It's going to hold the blocks together so there's no slippage or having them fall apart. On a project like this, you're always going to want to make sure you're wearing gloves. You're going to lay and stack four of the cinder blocks together. You're going to do this for both sides. Always want to make sure I take my level and just make sure it looks good. Then we're going to take two more. Turn them the flat way. Use the construction adhesive, lay it down, and put the bricks on. These are going to lay sideways, facing each other. The next thing we're going to do, on the back half of the last cinder block, we're going to put some construction adhesive and lay this cinder block facing up. Now that we've got our cinder blocks in place, you're going to use a total of seven on each side. The next step is putting the wood in. And here it is, our final project. I think it just turned out great. I literally built this thing for less than $60. To start, I'm gonna need a wood crate and I'm gonna give this a good coat of paint here. I am using a top of a desk that I am no longer using anymore. And I'm gonna take my painted crate and place it bottom side down. Then I'm just gonna drill some holes and add some screws. Make sure to use screws that aren't gonna go all the way through the table, but are long enough to really keep it secure. Then we just flip it over and we have this low table that's going to offer some great floor seating. To make it even more cozy, I'm adding some cushions to the ground. It's a really great conversation area to enjoy a drink or some snacks or even a meal. Add some greenery and some soft lighting and this makes the perfect outdoor seating area. Grab an old door from your local thrift store. Place it on two sawhorses. Begin by removing any hinges and sanding it smooth. Once it's sanded, blow away the dust and add some primer. After it's been coated in primer, add the paint color of your choosing. We decided to go with the fresh white, but you can do any color. Paint the sawhorses as well. After it's dry, carefully get rid of any glass using a hammer, pliers, and protective gear. Next, secure the door to the sawhorses and seal the paint. The mini window we removed allowed us to perfectly place our umbrella inside. Now you have a gorgeous picnic table for all those summer parties.
I printed a deer design from my computer and traced it on a clear Ziploc bag. I cut a square hole in the cardboard box using a utility knife. Next, I taped the Ziploc bag design over the hole. Then, I placed the box in front of the wall. I turned my cell phone light on. I put it inside of the box at the opposite end as the design and I closed the lid. Put covers over the windows. I traced the design on the wall using a pencil. Once I was done, I turned the lights back on and was ready to paint. I was careful to work from top down and left to right so I didn't smudge the wet paint. When it was completely dry, I removed the remaining pencil marks with an eraser and damp rag. And here's my stunning wall feature for only the cost of paint. It really gave this book nook a wow factor and has made two boys very happy. So I went to the dollar store and I bought three bags of those vase filler gems. After sorting them, I washed them off using Blue Dawn and water and then laid them out to dry. I drew lines from the edge of the vanity to meet the mirror line. I applied a thin coat of mastic using a small notched trowel. Then the fun began as I pressed the gems into the mastic. I worked in small sections so the mastic wouldn't dry too quickly. Once I was done, I mixed the grout. I mixed one cup of grout to a half a cup of water. I applied the grout in small sections, making sure I was pushing it between each of the gems. I wanted to make sure that every spot was filled in between them. After one hour, I checked again, and yep, it was nice and dry. Using a large spun and plain water, I washed away all of the excess grout. I removed the painter's tape that I had placed on the top of the vanity and applied caulk, smoothing it out with my finger. Now, what a difference it makes, and no more splattered wall. I fell in love with this beautiful floral fabric and I knew it would be perfect on my office wall. We measured the wall to make sure we purchased enough. We knew we needed three panels, so we had them cut accordingly. We started in the corner and used a staple gun to secure the fabric in place. After that, we used spray adhesive to ensure the fabric was well secured. Before drying starts, gently smooth out all air bubbles. Don't forget to overlap about an inch with each panel for a smooth transition and line up your patterns as best you can. Once all panels are hung, smooth and staple along the bottom about a quarter of an inch above your baseboard. Using an X-Acto knife, cut fabric starting in the top corner going down. This will help to make sure the fabric does not stretch or tear. Place your knife between the baseboard and a credit card to help you make the perfect straight line. Gently cut around any outlets using your X-Acto knife and a credit card. And there you have it, a fun and easy change to any room. So I headed to the hardware store and picked up some 1x4s. I measured the wall and marked out where my boards would go on the wall. I made sure it was level and then used a nail gun to attach the boards vertically to the wall. Now I could measure down for the horizontal boards. Then I cut the horizontal boards and attached them. I cut the board around the outlet area and left plenty of space around it so that I wouldn't have any problem plugging things in in the future. I caulked the inside edges of my newly formed accent wall boxes. Once this dried, I sanded down the joints. I picked out a blue color that I thought would look soothing in the room, and it only cost me $30. That was the cost of the wood, since I didn't have to pay for the paint, since it's something that I reused from a previous project.
the next time you're at Dollar Tree, grab yourself some of their succulent picks in a variety of different colors and styles that you like. And then you're also going to want to grab some of their foam pool noodles, but make sure you grab the green ones. So I have this vintage oil painting here. This one I actually was hanging on to. It was my grandmother's. So I'm taking out the oil painting as well, removing the matte border around the frame. I decided I wanted to paint my frame. I want it to be full gold. So I'm going to use some of this deco art metallic paint and I'm just going to do a quick coat over top of the frame. So once my paint was on and it fully dried and set, I could come in with my frame and my pool noodles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the frame over. I'm going to use the pool noodle as a measuring guide and then I'm going to cut it exactly so it fits in the little ledge of the frame. So I do this really easily with an exacto knife and then I'm going to cut the pool noodle directly in half. With my half a pool noodle I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to continue to cut them till I have enough to fill the frame. So once I have enough here I'm going to take some E6000 and I'm going to glue just the edges of the frame and the edges of the pool noodle and I'm going to place the pool noodle into the frame but making sure that the curved side is going to be facing out. So I'm working backwards here so you can see I have the cut side and I'm placing it down into the ledge of the frame. So I'm going to continue doing this until I've glued in all the pieces of my pool noodle and the entire frame has been filled. Now you do want to let this set for a good uh, six hours if you can just to let the glue set and let the pool noodles really settle in there. Then once it's fully set, I'm going to come in here and create my own little backing. So I have this just rough piece of wood left over from another project. It's like a thin MDF paneling. And I'm going to glue that on with hot glue and a mixture of E6000. And I'm just going to press it onto the pool noodles there, giving a little bit of pressure and holding it down till the hot glue is set. Then I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Make sure I like the placement of my pool noodles. I can fix them up and adjust them if need be. And then just to make the back a little prettier, I have this uh, green fabric that I'm just going to lay over top. And then I'm going to take a stapler and I'm going to staple it around just so the back is closed in. So I'm going to be turning this into like a live art piece. So I'm going to start with some moss. So I have some reindeer moss here and you want to make sure that you have lots of different styles of moss to give this some different texture. So I have reindeer moss, I have some Spanish moss, lots of different types of moss to give me all those varying different colors of green and brown. So I'm going to work along gluing them onto the pool noodles and you want to make sure that you shove them down in between the pool noodles. Once I have filled in the entire frame, I'm going to come in with the succulent picks that I picked up from the dollar store, trim them down, add a bit of hot glue to the edge, and then I'm going to work them in, in between the pool noodles. So the stem of the succulent just sits right in between those pool noodles and it just kind of grabs it and holds them in there. I'm going to add as many succulents as I like till I get the desired look. And here is this finished project. I am so happy with how this project turned out. It's like an earthy, elegant piece of decor that I can hang in my home. And it didn't cost me a lot to make this project. I really hope that this inspires you to get creative and grab some succulents from the Dollar Tree and see what you can come up with with this project. I got this box on Amazon. This is gr a great functional piece you can use over and over again. And I am just going to wedge some floral foam that I pre-cut so that it will really um, be wedged in there tight. And there you go. And I'm going to put the succulents right over on one end of our... And uh, most of these succulents I also got on Amazon. I've been big on not having things delivered to me, or on having things delivered to me. But look, look how pretty those are right there in the edge. So we're just gonna keep building this up and putting some succulents all along the edge there. Let's put this one right here. A couple of these, just like so. Isn't this looking good already? And I wanna, I wanna make sure I mix them up. This was a collection that I bought on Amazon. But the great thing about these succulents is they add a different texture. And see how easy that is? I'm sure you can do this too. 
And I want one of these to kind of hang over the edge. So I'll use this one right here to break the edge of that. Start going down the side here. That's all I've got. And now on this side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some moss. This is kind of a colorful moss because again, this is kind of a drab time of year. So we want to add some color and fun. And I'm going to tuck this up under my succulents like so because we don't want the foam to show. That's the great thing about succulents too, is that they look so realistic that nobody's necessarily going to know that these are artificial. And besides that, I have a terrible time keeping succulents alive. So we're gonna tuck that in there and I'm gonna clean this up and then come back and show you what else we're going to add to fill this in. So with the succulents all in this side and moss in this side, I have collected some white artificial silk flowers and some greenery. And what I'm going to do, the great thing about dry floral foam, it's very soft. And I'm just going to take these pieces and cut them apart with a good pair of wire cutters and add them to the other half. So when things start to get a little sad and empty after you take down all your Christmas decor, you could add a bright spot with something new. This was not very expensive. and is a great way to brighten up any little spot in your home. You can use this for a centerpiece or you can use it on a shelf. There we go. So don't, don't hesitate to mix succulents with something blooming. And I'm just gonna make a little hole through the moss there to stick that right down in the foam and just a little more greenery and we will be all done. And I'll show you where we're gonna display this on a table. When I brought this upstairs, um, I thought, mm, I really wanted a little bit more white. So I cut three pieces of white silk flowers and I'm just going to add those in around the little silk magnolia blossoms like so. And that makes it a little bit brighter. But now look at this beautiful arrangement you have and how easy that was to do. And when you've taken down all the Christmas, you have something new and cheerful and green to brighten things up. So I hope this is a project you might want to try. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Home Talk. These cute containers came from the Dollar Tree to attach the pink to the purple. I'm gonna go ahead and place the adhesive about right in there. Slide together, very firm hold. Let's top it right in the middle there. I've got a large adhesive strip and I'm just going to put it on the back side of my sconces and then I'm going to attach it to the wall. I think it turned out super cute and not too bad for only $15. Pick up some faux flowers at your local dollar store. Pull the top layer of petals off the flower and remove the inner plastic cage. Reassemble the flower, grab a box of Plaster of Paris and some water, and mix according to the manufacturer's directions. Dunk the flower into the plaster and swirl around. Take a tea light candle and set in the middle of the wet flower and wrap a rubber band around the outside. After about an hour of drying, remove the rubber band and tea light. If after a flower has dried, you find that some of the flower's color is still showing, you can re-dunk it in the plaster of Paris to get everything covered. I love the white powdery finish of the plaster covered flower. If you want to take it a step further, brush some metal leaf adhesive sizing to the petals of the flower. Gently brush off the excess with a small brush. Slip in a tea light, light the candle, and enjoy. Check out these colorful bowls. You're gonna turn it upside down. You're gonna take that heat tool and just press down. And we're gonna wanna do that to a couple more of these. I'm just going to use this to trace. We'll start with one of the blue bowls and one of the clear ones. And I'm gonna take some Gorilla Clear Grip. You're gonna to wanna to put this on and then let it sit. Make sure that you get this exactly right one more blue bowl let that sit right there Do you see how you can see the battery packs down at the base i'm going to take some ivy see how you can uh, disguise that a little bit decided to add a few white poppies and you can see how much light 
These will bring to a tabletop. Headed down to my local Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start with these glass beads. I'm gonna also head over and get some rubbing alcohol. Next, I grab this bowl, got it from Home Depot. I'm gonna grab some sand, start putting it in the bottom. So you wanna fill it up to where when you get your bowl, you're gonna kinda be level with the top and it has a firm foundation. Let's go ahead and start putting some more sand in so that it holds it in place to level it out. Make sure that bowl is firm. We don't want any spillage or that thing moving when we light it up. Go ahead and put the metal bowl in and then remember those glass beads and start placing them all the way around. Take that rubbing alcohol and pour a little bit in there. Give it a little bit of a flame and it's gonna light right up. If you need to put it out, you're just gonna put a metal lid on top. It's great for just relaxing nearby. Look at these flamingos that I found at Dollar Tree. This is an 18 inch straw wreath and I picked up some of these artificial lays at Dollar Tree. I'm going to use these floral pins, just pin them. I thought the colors were a little flat. So I picked up some acrylic paint. Each of your flamingos comes with two of these wire legs, if you will, but you will be able to cut them and you want to put a healthy helping of glue all around the bottom and push the wire all the way down into your straw wreath. And I'm just going to take these and put them around the base. And look how cute this looks on my back door. Platter from Dollar Tree. So I'm first gonna start by putting the E6000. We're gonna take the beads and we're just gonna place them all the way around. And we are gonna paint this whole surface. We are gonna be taking a printable. I have tacky glue, but you can also use Mod Podge. All right, so I added a little bit of water to my glue. We're gonna paint over it with our glue. We're gonna take an 18 inch wreath frame, some nautical rope, and we are going to be cutting it into smaller pieces to place around our wreath. I'm going to be taking some black acrylic paint. We're gonna go across. And now that this is all dry, we are gonna be taking our hot glue gun. I'm using Gorilla Glue and I'm gonna use my hot glue basically just to kind of cover that gap. And here's the after of my Dollar Tree plate DIY boho wreath. Head to your local dollar store and pick up a clear plastic bowl, a metal flower vase, a floral foam square, and some faux flowers. Pull a wood candle lid from a used candle and remove the rubber ring. Spray paint this candle lid, the clear plastic bowl, and the metal flower vase. Use a strong adhesive and glue the candle lid to the bottom of the painted metal vase. Glue the painted bowl to the top of the candle lid. Give the entire footed pedestal bowl a light coat of white spray paint. Put some hot glue on the four corners of the square florist foam and glue it to the bottom of the bowl. Take pieces of faux greenery and stick them in and around the base next. Take some bunches of faux flowers, stick the separated flowers into the florist foam. If you have any bare spots showing, fill those areas with a little green moss. Place the pedestal floral arrangement on a dollar store charger plate and surround it with green moss. I hope this inspired you to create a beautiful floral pedestal centerpiece for under $10. You're going to need some dollar store solar lights. Flip the bowl upside down and we need to remove the label. Next, I'm gonna focus on the solar light. So we just take the stem off. We're not even gonna need that. You need to open up the solar light and pull out the tag so that the solar light works. Then you can place that back on and this part is ready to be used. This will be the base of our project. What I'll be using for this project for weight are these dollar store rocks. So I'm gonna be placing them inside. For the next step, I'm gonna place the solar light in top like this. I'll go ahead and add a few more rocks to this. So what I'm gonna do is add a little dab of hot glue on each corner, like so. I'm gonna take that bowl and flip it upside down and place it right there on top so it's centered. So just to show you, if I remove this out, you can see here, I would be able to pull this off and replace this easily with another dollar store solar light if this burns out at some point. Here they are in my dish flower garden and I'm thrilled with how they turned out. I'm going to stick these grasses and weeds to this glass, cut off these extra bits on the bottom. Now I'm going to stick the tissue paper to the vase. I'm going to use a glue stick and then just rolling it 
pulling it tight on this side, put some more glue down and gently stick that in place too. I'm going to go around and just trim and just see how pretty these are. Really, really simple project to do. Headed down to a local Dollar Tree. I'll grab some rope, some clear bottles, and some cool little lights. Let's take the hook off the top of the light. Next, we're gonna take the bulb off. Next, we need to take the actual light mechanism and pop it out. What we need to do is paint this cover. Now on the bottle, we have a cork here. We can go ahead and just remove that. Next, I grabbed off of Amazon a bottle cutter. Put the bottle on the rollers and you go ahead and start turning it. What you want to do is hear this noise. That means you're cutting right through the bottle, but it won't cut all the way through. I'm going to show you a little cut line on there. Stick the bottle in the boiling water for a good 30 seconds. Once you got it in there and it's heated up, immediately go ahead and put it in the icy cold water. It's going to separate along the score line and look at that. Perfect. Takes off the bottom and you've got a nice flat smooth line. Put the lights back through our painted cover and clip it back on. Take some E6000 glue and place it around the edge. Take some hot glue and put it in the areas I didn't put the E6000 on. That's going to hold the cover in place while the glue is drying. You're going to stick the lights inside the bottle, set the cover on top. Then we're going to take that rope, stick some hot glue on the neck of the bottle, let that hold, and then we're going to start wrapping it all the way around the neck. And then take this extra twine, we're going to put it through the hook. I made three of these and we put them up and it made a perfect summer afternoon. I'm going to grab me some solar lights. Next, head over to the hardware store. I'm going to grab me about 100 feet of nylon rope. First thing I got to do is blow up this dollar beach ball. Then I gotta get out some Portland cement. Make sure it's not concrete, but cement. Take a little bucket and you're gonna pour some water in first so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Add that cement as much as you can. Then if it gets a little too thick, add some more water, but you keep stirring. You want it actually really thin, a lot thinner than it would if it was pudding because we need to coat that rope. Go ahead and mix it all up and once you do, take that first bit of rope and put it in there. Make sure you're wearing some gloves and just soak it up. If it gets a little bit too lumpy, go ahead and add some more water. Now on that beach ball, just start laying that rope. You're just going to start roping it all the way around. It's going to be a little bit of a messy job, but it's going to be worth it. Just keep wrapping that rope all over. When you get to the beginning of that rope, make sure you got it all covered up so that it holds it in place. Again, just keep that cement going and just keep running all over that ball. You're going to keep going all the way around until you've got a pretty good amount around it. Once you get to the end, what you're going to do is tuck that last bit in underneath the rope. And it's going to hold it in place. Then what we can do is move on to possibly adding a little bit more cement. Again, I mixed some more water with it and used a brush. Make sure you cover all that rope. We want it to stiffen up as best we can. Go ahead and get it all on there. We're going to let it sit for a couple hours once we get it covered. Once it's covered, take a knife and just puncture the beach ball. It only cost me a dollar, so it was fine. Once we get it all the air out, just go ahead and pull it through one of the bigger openings between the ropes. Just pull it all the way out, and then you've got this wonderful string orb. Now, I want to clean it up. Took a little bit of a plastic fork and just clean up the edges. Don't want anything flaking off. Now, let me show you a secret. Take a squirt bottle and start squirting all the string and you're just going to powder it with the cement. Just keep doing that all over, spray it on with water and then put some more cement on. What this does is make it thicker and strengthen it up. Just keep doing this over and over until you get the right thickness. Once you get it all wet up and thickness out, we're going to grab that dollar light again. Now it's solar powered, so no need to worry about a switch. Take out the bottom part. You're going to turn it around, put it in, and that's what's going to stick into the ground. Go ahead and put it right into the ground, right in the area you want to put it. And then you're going to take your string orb and you're going to put it right over the light, right in the middle and lay it on down. Get it positioned exactly where you want it. Once it's in place, it just looks really good. Just sitting there. It's waterproof because it's on the nylon rope and it's made out of cement. But once night comes, look at it light up. It is amazing to see from your yard and from the street. I hope this inspired you to build your own string light cement orb.